Hey guys, welcome to the Ruby on Rails video series. Uh, in this series, we're going to learn how to use Ruby on Rails, learn what it is, what it does, um, and we're going to have seven chapters with three to five sections each. And I'm going to briefly go over the chapters right now. So chapter one, we'll have a we're going to get a basic understanding of what Ruby on Rails and what Ruby is. Um, so we're going to do uh, a brief history and then we're going to do some installation on Windows and Linux. This particular series is going to be based on Windows, but um, a lot of users and developers do use Linux uh, with Ruby on Rails, so I will go over how to install it on Linux as well. And there's an optional video um, showing you how to actually install Linux, Ubuntu, onto uh, virtual on a virtual machine using VMware and I mean that's not something that's required for this course but um, you know, just in case you want to try it yourself you want to mess around in Linux a little bit um, we'll be going over in chapter one how to create a, an app or an, an app framework because Ruby on Rails generates it'll generate the actual framework for us uh, it takes that it takes the work out of us having to create it so I'll show you how to uh, start up an app and, and have it generate the folders and files. And we'll also be using Heroku and Git for, uh, for version control. Um, and so that's, that's basically the gist of chapter one. Um, and chapter two is going to be all about the Ruby programming language because Ruby on Rails itself is not a language. Um, a lot of beginners think that it is a language, but it's actually a framework for building web applications with Ruby. So Ruby is its own language, uh, and you don't don't worry about it if you don't have if you don't know any Ruby because a lot of people learn Rails and they don't know a lick of Ruby. What you do have to have a, a pretty well understanding of is programming in general. Um, you know, if statements, classes, um, stuff like that. So we'll be doing the, the introduction and history of Ruby, and we'll also be using a, a um, software called IRB, Interactive Ruby, and it just, that's, it's just a, it's a program that lets us run Ruby on our Windows machine in a command line, okay? And the next thing we're going to do is um, we're just going to go over some programming essentials, which you probably have a little understanding of uh, variables, functions, loops, uh, if else statements, and then we're going to go over the object oriented properties of Ruby. Ruby is actually a, a pure object or oriented um, pr programming language, but you can also do procedural stuff as well. Um, so that's chapter two. Chapter three, we'll be going over the Rails framework in. We're going to have a crash course on uh, MVC, which is Model View Controller. Um, it's one of the most popular and, and best, in my opinion, design patterns for um, any web app. So we're going to get into that. Um, we're going to get into some configuration and routing stuff uh, about the Rails framework. And we're going to do some scaffolding. And we're going to generate some code. We're going to generate some of the, the MVC stuff. Uh, as well. Chapter 4 will be dealing with controllers which is the C in MVC. Um, controllers they control, they control uh, the response and request of for HTTP, HTTP requests and also uh, the URL structure. URL is based on um, the controllers on Ruby on Rails. Um, and we're also going to be doing sessions and we're going to show you how to render views from the controller. Chapter 5 is going to be the M in MVC, which is models, which generally uh, has to do with the database, querying the database um, and, and getting and, and setting stuff all from the, the database tables. Um, we're going to generate a model and we're going to talk a little bit about databases because Rails can use either, by default it uses SQLite 3, uh, which is a serverless database, and we can also use MySQL, which is probably what we're going to be doing. And I do want to say that 
these these slides that I'm showing you now um, they might not be exact as as the course is when you get it um, it'll be pretty much the same same idea but a couple sections might be might be switched around so um, don't worry about that if you're not seeing the same exact slides the same exact structure of, of this tutorial series so we'll also be doing database migration which is an awesome rails tool that we can use to, to generate tables and, and table data active record is a, a component of Ruby that allows us to use the active record syntax and um, for querying databases Chapter 6 will be the V in MVC, which is the views, which is what the your users, your, your website visitors will see. Um, it usually consists of HTML and CSS with some Ruby integrated into it. So we'll be generating a view. Uh, we'll take a look at templates and layouts, uh, partials, helpers, and forms, and integrating HTML and CSS. And the last chapter, which is Chapter 7, is going to be all about our project and uh, through the through the previous chapters we might dibble and dabble in this project but chapter 7 is going to be dedicated to actually creating it and it's going to be called my Ruby blog and it's it's just going to be a blog platform um, for, for you to log in you, we can, we'll do user authentication and you'll be able to log in and, and edit posts and create new posts and and all that good stuff so we'll, we'll get to do some crud which is uh, create read update and delete which every every app essentially has something along the lines of what we'll be doing so um, so that'll be good and then we'll I'm gonna show you we're gonna start with a an empty just an HTML CSS template I'm not gonna go into creating the HTML or, or CSS I'm not I'm not going to do that. I'm going to assume that you already know that because you should know basic HTML and CSS before you try something like Rails. Um, and I will be referring to Ruby on Rails as Rails just because it's easier and shorter and, and that's usually what developers call it. So, um, And that's it. We'll, then we'll launch our app and you should, by then, you should have a, a really good gist. You should know all the basics and even some of the, the more advanced parts of Ruby on Rails. So um, let's dig in and start coding.